Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Sonny Bournemouth, delighted to be joined by Shane McGuigan, trainer, of course, of the main event challenger, Chris Billum-Smith. Shane, how you doing? Good, thanks, Danny, mate. Yeah, it's nice to be out here in the sun, so happy. See anything in the face-off or at the press conference that changed your opinion on the fight or any insights into maybe Lawrence's mindset? Yeah, you can see he's coming here with intent. You know, he's had a um, two two points decisions. He obviously wants a knockout. Um, you know, but like I thought the Seslak fight wasn't necessarily a bad fight for the first five, six rounds, and it sort of lapsed into a little bit of uh, the old Lawrence. And then that last one, I think it was just a um, awkward opponent. David Light wasn't really coming to engage, and um, and it just yeah, he fell into the to, to the old habits. But he didn't have, didn't have a long time with with Sugar Hill, so you've got to give him a bit of slack there he's obviously gone straight back into camp as well so i think it's going to benefit him being active um but no not not seen anything really specifically i mean as i said he's just he's just here to do a job and i think he wants to impress and having spoken to both akoli and sugar hill they've both kind of indicated they felt that lawrence's uh, basics were lacking going into the relationship with sugar hill considering how much time you spent with him and he's been with other trainers before you how do you feel about those comments I think he's on his fourth coach in like 19 fights. So, um, and then he was with two or three amateur clubs as well. Um, so he's been around a lot of different coaches. Um, I don't necessarily think it's like a reflection on any specific coach. I think Lawrence is very effective and has a very good style, but he's got an awkward style and it's also, it's kind of awkward to coach. It's not like the Adam Azeems or the, you know, the, 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 Caroline Dubois of this world where you can sort of work on specific things you know it's not as coordinated as them but what he does have is he's got fantastic attributes got six foot nine inch reach you know got great strength uh, very 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 good punching power um, and he's you know, got a winning mentality so you know I think there's always a star quality in a world champion you can't be a world champion and, and just and be basic all round you know you might have weaknesses and, and flaws in your game but you'll always have an excelling trait and I think you know Lawrence is his physicality and he he sometimes relies on it too much as I said we spent three years three three and a half years working together to try and get him to you know stick out of that range a little bit longer um, and he can do it in sparring it's just sometimes like after four or five rounds if they're if they're still there if they're still live and punching back I think he always falls into a, a pattern but this fight, I think, is going to be different, not necessarily because of Sugar Hill. Or, or I think it's going to be different because Chris knows that he can't fight there all the time, even though it's like, even though he, um, Chris gets a lot of success in that short range. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, he, we ha we're going to have to come up with different, with, uh, with different game plan. We've talked before about when fighters you've stopped working with go on to achieve things and you still have a sense of pride in that. Do you get any sounds harsh but any sort of satisfaction if they regress after they leave you not really um i just like my, my whole my whole ethos is do as best as you can with someone whilst they're in the gym you know this 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 this, this gym is a is a, uh, re a revolving door but not it's just it's it's seen as that because you know i'm quite a high profile coach so people can see the fights come and go but if you look at most gyms even the amateur gyms pe people move on all the time um so you know for for, for me um yeah, just do as good as I can with them. We've talked about your specific value in this fight because of all the time you spent with Lawrence. But what about in terms of being the calm head in the corner? Because Chris is in front of, you know, probably a rabid audience all wanting him to win. There's a danger he could get caught up in that. How important is your role there in the intervals? Yeah, look, I mean, I've been involved in big fights before. Um, I've been involved in, in high pressure fights with, with Chris Bill and Smith as well. Yeah, you know, whether there's react poor on the undercard of Dylan White versus uh, Rebus is like, you know, it's still a high pressure situation. You know, you fight for your first title, whether it's in front of 2,000 or, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 people, it doesn't really matter. It all becomes a blur once you're in there. Um, it's just dealing with that individual in title fights. And the good thing about us is that we've had, you know, we've had React Poor title fight. We've had obviously all of the other title fights. We had the uh, Tommy McCarthy two fights. He's, he's had those high pressure uh, situations. He's brought a few fights back here as well, which is like dealing with the home crowd. And I, I just don't really see much of a difference between, you know, him fighting for a world title in, in Bournemouth rather than him fighting Isaac Chamberlain. It's all the same, really. It's the nerves are always going to be there. Boxing's a, an industry that you got one loss and people completely write you off. So you're, you're constantly defending your, you know, that, that status. So that in itself comes with huge pressure. 
How much, if anything, do you look at the trainer in the other corner when you're taking these big fights on? Does that play into your thinking? Not at all. Um, not at all. Because really, it just depends with the athlete that you're working with. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, for myself, I, I know I know that, that where, you know, what Chris is, is good at and, and what Lawrence is good at. And I, and I don't really think anything much I think to be honest like after three four rounds I think Lawrence goes back to the old Lawrence Coley it that takes a lot of time and it takes discipline within the athlete to be able to stick to the game plan and you know, execute it like Lawrence is a clever guy and he can stick to, to certain things it's just um, he finds a way to win and he finds a way to, to get things done on not necessarily great days so I just think the two of their styles is going to blend so much so that he he'll he'll look for a way to win. The fact that you helped build him and develop him into the animal he is now, I don't mean that disrespectfully, does that make you the ideal person to plot his downfall? Like I've got no, I've got I've got no hatred towards Lawrence at all, you know, like I like I've always only ever wanted him to be successful. Obviously like when we split up working together, it was it was just done very, you know, mutually really. I mean, he you know, he moved to a certain place I wasn't committed to go to a certain training camps abroad and stuff so like there's no malice there it's like it, but it will be seen as a, a, a as, as malice on my side because i'm trying to plot his downfall but really we're just trying to win this fight you know what i mean and like Lawrence coley has a, has a great career uh you know if he loses to to to, to chris bill smith he can still reinvent himself whether he's at cruiserweight or, or heavyweight he's he's sort of built that status now you know it's up to it's up to chris to really this is his breakout fight this is his one that you know, he really needs to, to win um, and give him that sort of status that he deserves to be headlining all the time after this. Did you ever consider going in another direction simply because of that relationship? I know it's an advantage in the ring, but maybe it's a bit awkward outside it, kind of plotting against someone you were once close to. No, because look, to be honest, it, it just made a lot of sense. I mean, I thought the David Light fight was going to last three or four rounds. I, I, we rang John Wish on the Sunday before the fight was on the sat the following Saturday, so six days before. And we said, uh, John, look, I know like we were we were working in for like tirelessly to get this Ar Arsene Gullamarian to come to Bournemouth. He kept pr kept pricing himself out, kept pricing himself out. And it just, you know, he has um a manager that just wasn't moving, thought there was a lot more money in the pot than there was. You know, and, and we were struggling to get that deal done. With Jay Uptay has got a little bit of a legal issue with both of these change management and promotions he's, he's a bit caught up as well and we knew that there was no there was no inroads with Badu Jack um, you know he just won against um, yeah, uh, Mikabu and obviously yeah he's looking at like and rightfully so he's, he's quite an old fire he was a natural super middleweight he's looking at a cash out fight whether that's Canelo or something like that you know, he wants a wants an easier fight and we could just never generate the money to to, to be able to afford Badu Jack unless they put it on pay-per-view he doesn't hold pay-per-view status so it was like Let's get Lawrence Coley. There's going to be a three-four round job, and then let's get him. You know, and it's and it's because we want Chris to fight for a world title. This would not have sold if it wasn't a world title on the line. Even if it was Chris versus Lawrence, and it was for a European title, it would have sold half the amount of seats. You know, the fact that you know these a lot of these fans in there aren't necessarily going to be boxing fans. They're just going to be fans of Bournemouth Football Club, and they they want they they've been told and it's been advertised that there's a world title fight coming back here. So so that gives it that credibility and that status and. And um, you know, it's it was it was the right decision to to bring Lawrence, a British fighter, as well, because sold instantly. It's obviously, a great backstory with him being in the gym. Um, yeah, let's just try and put the ice on the cake in this uh, fairy tale story. And just finally, you've had multiple world champions, but Chris is someone you've had from the very beginning. He's someone long associated with your gym as well, famously as George Groves' sparring partner at one point. How much will it mean to you personally if he's successful on Saturday night? It'll be huge. I said it the other day that I think it will be my greatest win as a coach. Um, you know, and that's nothing to discredit um, Chris's ability or anything. It's just from where he came from, coming from a small hall show. I mean, George Groves was like a multiple ABA junior champion. Then he won the seniors twice and he turned pro. Beat James DeGale. He was highly touted in the amateurs. Should have gone to the Olympics. Didn't. Beat James DeGale in the pros. Won a world. Yeah, fought for world titles and didn't quite get there. Great story for me to take George. You know. Get, get him over the finish line um, with uh, Chudanov and then obviously the defences against like Eubank and stuff and obviously Carl Frampton was highly decorated amateur Josh Taylor same same thing um, and, and Lawrence Foley went to the Olympics as well so for me it was th this is a guy that you know, didn't get on GB went to multiple trials didn't have an extensive amateur career 
um, and has just grafted. You know, we, and we thought that British title was going to be, you know, a, a good, a, a, a good chance, you know, a good stepping stone for us to get there. And we set our sights at that. Um, he obviously won the Commonwealth first, but then that came and the European came, and he got so highly ranked. And I have to say thank you to, to Matchroom uh, for getting him in that position and giving him them opportunities as well. And and then a, a huge thanks to. Uh, to boxer for seeing this vision you know we've been bar we've been barking on about this like come on get a massive show down here in bournemouth um, and every time we mentioned it to a lot of promoters they, they kind of giggled and chuckled at us and you know said you know that's that's never going to be that's never going to be uh, coming into being a reality but here we are and you know like it's it's, it's monumental and yeah if if chris wins it's uh, it's a special special moment for me as a coach Brilliant. Shane, really appreciate your time. Best luck Saturday.